it's Health Science Week this week, so I just wanted to have a quick chat today about uh, careers in dentistry. So, you know, when you go to the dentist, you probably, the only person you really probably notice is the dentist. So we all know that, you know, you can be a dentist, but there are lots of people that are working behind the scenes that make the dentist able to work. So ranging from I mean, even being, a, you know, the dental receptionist, that's that's a nice, you know, people facing uh, career that um, is is obviously absolutely necessary because if you haven't got a receptionist, you haven't got anybody making appointments. Moving on then to the dental nurse, which a dentist can't work without a dental nurse. So a dental nurse is um, the person that behind the scenes is getting everything ready for the dentist, ensuring that all the materials are ready, preparing the materials, passing the materials to the dentist, um, ensuring that all the records are, uh, are available, treatment plan um, is available to the dentist so they know what's uh, what's going on. Um, they then assist the dentist while they're you know, doing the treatment. Then you kind of think, okay, that's, that's their job kind of done. But it's not. <laughs> what you've got to do is uh, you've got to think about the instruments all need cleaning, s disinfecting, sterilising, bagged again for the for the next use. You have to make sure that the, all the trays are ready for the rest of the day. So you're looking ahead. You're kind of working two steps ahead of the dentist all the time. You're looking at stock, uh, stock rotation, stock ordering, making sure that everything that the dentist needs is going to be at his fingertips when they ask for it. So it's very complex. Um, it's a very responsible job. It's a job that, you know, you can stay in a, in a dental nursing career for life because it's it's really enjoyable. I mean, I, I'm maybe slightly biased because I'm a dental nurse, but um, I must admit, I have always loved being in the surgery, doing you, it, it, it's not really patient facing that, but you know, there are other qualifications that you can take. So there are extra uh, courses that you can do. I did the oral health educator course, which means you are more public facing. So what I used to do is have uh, patients that needed help with their oral hygiene and discuss with them how they achieved this, talk about diet, etc., etc. So um, that's an add on. There is also orthodontic nursing, uh, implant nursing, radiography, so you, t you take the x-rays, you can do an impression course so that you can take the impressions for the dentist, you can do application of fluoride, so you can put the fluoride on predominantly children's teeth um, to prevent dental decay. So there's lots of ways that you can add to your dental nurse portfolio. Then, then we look at hygiene therapists, or there's hygienists and there's therapists, but now when, when um, you train, you train as a hygiene therapist, so that they've, they've rolled them together. So sometimes you might see a hygienist, you might see a therapist, you might see a hygiene therapist. So that is um, a university course. So you're a dental nurse before you can um, do that course. So that then allows you to do all of the oral hygiene instruction, but you're actually scaling um, patient's teeth. So not only are you in a preventative role, but you are actually treating their gums um, making sure that their gums are clean and healthy, advising them on uh, the products to use, the foods that are better for them, keeping an eye on disease and making sure that a patient is in a position where they know what, what they need to do to keep their mouths healthy and their bodies healthy. Uh, a therapist then, if you add on that, that bit, uh, a hygiene therapist does all the hygiene bit but also can then do, on the prescription of a dentist, can do um, simple fillings and they can extract uh, baby teeth. So they have a role slotted in between. So the, the treatments that are really, really complex, the dentist can do, the slightly less complex, he can send them to the therapist to do. So it frees up um, more of the dentist's time to do the more complex things. So you've almost got a, 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 a grading system where each person knows their role. So if the role is out of the scope of a dental nurse, you'd see a hygienist. 
if it's out of the scope of a hygienist, you'd see a therapist. If you see a hygiene therapist, bingo, they can do both. If it is out of their scope, then the dentist will do it. So we're, we're looking at those. Those are the people that generally work in a, a, a dental practice. We also have um, clinical dental technicians, which generally work in a dental laboratory. Now, a clinical dental technician is a, a, a laboratory technician that makes dentures and crowns and bridges and any sort of a prosthesis that goes in the mouth. That is what the, uh, the, the uh, lab tech is doing. If they're a clinical dental technician, they can actually do some procedures themselves without you seeing your dentist. So, for example, if you have somebody who has no teeth at all and they need full upper denture, full lower denture, they can see a clinical dental technician without seeing a dentist. If the patient has some teeth, so they require what's called a partial denture, then what they need to do is go to their dentist to make sure that they're dentally fit before they can see the dental technician. So they would need what's called a certificate of oral health. So then they can take that to the clinical dental technician and have their dentures made. So again, that is getting somebody other than the dentist to lead in that, uh, in that scenario. But again, on the prescription of a dentist if it's a partial denture.